Welcome to US Tiji 360 Snapshots, I'm Ginger Chang. Today we look at the character education program started by Tiji's Education Foundation in 2007. It's a program that serves the schools of several communities in the Los Angeles area. Volunteers first started off at Lytle Creek Elementary School in San Bernardino, California. Over 96% of the student population here qualifies for free school lunches because they're from low-income households. Even though the student-to-teacher ratio is a healthy 20 to 1, sometimes more care and support is needed due to the students coming from immigrant families. Thus, Tsuji volunteers stepped in to help. Ready? We designed a game called Forks and Spoons, and so their task is to either use the spoon that they have in their hand or a fork they have in their hand to transport the item from one end to the other. Spoons versus forks, they all have things that they're strong in and that they're good at, but regardless, if you put in the effort, you could still do it. So that kind of ties into, well, think about some things that you are good at and how you can use what you are good at to help somebody else. In 2006, the Zerchi Foundation began teaching character education at a Lytle Creek Elementary School and now comes twice a month to present lessons like forks and spoons about character building. It was destiny that we picked Lytle Creek. San Bernardino is a very impoverished community, so we have been doing free health clinics there for a while. We also use the campus of Lytle Creek as a site for the health clinics. When the principal first saw our Jingzi aphorisms, she liked them a lot. She also said that this school is so impoverished that these children feel abandoned and hopeless. So we all believe that the best way to help the school was to do so using Master's wisdom. If we can use Master's teachings to design a deep and engaging curriculum, it will be very useful for these children. Does it matter what it is you think you are limited to? There's so much more that you can do, just like with the spoons and the forks and our water and our streams, okay? We bring in uh, what they will encounter during their everyday lives, and we try and teach them um, something that they can take along with them. I want you to think about your talents, okay, and where you can go to help others with your talents. What kind of people, what kind of places might need your help, okay? I play basketball. I like playing sports. If somebody, like, is not good. We could start, like, practice for kids. There's, like, a lot of people who like singing and dancing. We could do something with our talent. I would probably, like, help them in their vocals. We want them to be able to internalize it so that later on, perhaps when they go to college and they get a job or have a family, that they can remember all the things that they've learned from character education and teach it. The talent is diverse, it's different. Despite the improvements in moral development, there's some debate over character education's connections to test scores. But for Zerchi Foundation, this program is more than just about the performance in the classroom. It's not always about getting the right math problems or the right science questions, but it's basically using what we've taught them and thinking and deciding if what they're going to do, if this decision is a good decision or not. One time, I asked the student, why do you do your homework? The children all responded with answers such as, because we're afraid of the teacher's punishment or teacher and mother would be mad. We began teaching there in February, and when we went back again in May, we asked the same question again. The answers that time were very different. Some said, because I want to go to high school. Others said, because I want to find a good job. And still others, because I want to be someone useful. Kids get a lot of, out of it. For example, uh, two weeks ago, they, they did a lesson on etiquette. They actually got to teach the, taught the students 
where the plate goes, where the napkin goes, where the fork goes. And a lot of the students, they really, they didn't know that concept and they were really thrilled to go home and share it with their parents. I can't really look back because there's so many lessons I look forward to. When you guys come, it's fun. I like it because it shows not everyone our lives. The class is awesome. Since I started with you guys like in first grade, I really thought of stuff like helping people. As a small child, it's often hard to feel like you have strength. However, there's an aphorism by Dharma Master Zheng Yin that says each person has limitless potential. And when someone feels empowered, their abilities can even surprise themselves. While Dharma Master Zheng Yin's teachings are timeless, young minds still may have trouble understanding the lessons. Thus, volunteers carefully plan and present them in a way that not only engages the student's senses and curiosity, but also in a way that the basic concepts will hopefully stay with them as they grow. Though each character education lesson lasts only 45 minutes, hours of preparation work goes into each of those minutes. Let's go see this process in action. The United States actually places great emphasis on character building in their education, something they have worked on for many years. However, our research shows that there is something missing in their approach. How do we combine teaching, Buddhist Dharma, and the core values of Western civilization into a character-building curriculum? We spend a lot of time on Master Zheng Yin's books, Jing Su publications, Thai TV's Daily Volunteer Stories, and the Wisdom at Dawn series, in the hope that we can use a very interactive and engaging teaching style that incorporates the Jing Su aphorisms to inspire the children to think about doing the right thing. In the United States, the official curriculum has 12 themes, such as civil duty, respect, etc. So we thought, okay, how do we connect Zuchi's language to these existing local themes? After much discussion, we decided that there are 10 themes. We meet every Wednesday. That's our set scheduled meeting. Depends on what grade that we have that current year. We go from there. We usually like to start with something that wows them. So that's our, that's our first step. We need to find whether it's a story or a video that hits the topic right away so that they have a little bit of a background knowledge before the, uh, we start teaching. So it requires a lot of research, a lot of reading. Sometimes we have good days and we, are, we hit the target right away. A lot of times it's in weeks of revising, but the atmosphere is always very supportive. So we always listen to each other's ideas and we go, oh, okay, we could use this. And then we put it out in the lesson step-by-step -step process. So I think this interview will be more interesting. Teacher, please. Please, please, please. A lot of it really depends on carrying out the lesson plan and a lot of times when we carry out the lesson plan we always come back and we discuss what we could do better or what went really well that we're going to keep and we edit that lesson plan again. Additionally, we do attend uh, certain meetings with teachers and principals and also uh, meetings with the principal and the counselor to map out our character education topics and also to further enhance our relationship with the school. So we want to make sure that we give them what they need, not we don't give them what we think they need. They really actually enjoy the, the character education class and they like uh, the fact that we bring the Jinx aphorism because it's something completely new to them. Um, and also, we put English and the Chinese part together, and we teach them how to say the Jinx aphorism in Chinese as well. And so they like that a lot. That's, and it's also because it's a very short time when we read um, the Jinx aphorism, but the entire lesson plan uh, strives so that they can understand what this Jinx aphorism means. We brought our Tsuji's tea ceremony sisters to sixth grade to perform a tea ceremony for the sixth graders, and the topic was on respect. Um, and they enjoy that very much. 
uh, because you can tell that the tea ceremony sisters, they brought the whole atmosphere to them. It was to teach students that when you offer a drink to your friends, to your guests, or to even to your parents, are respectful, and you should have that attitude at all times. Whether or not it carried out as well as we would have liked to, but the teachers always appreciate what we bring to the table. And so I think be just because of that fact, they're very supportive. It's a very natural way to incorporate these ideas, and nothing is forced. We show the way to respect, which is the same in both Western and Oriental culture. We ask them, how do you feel when you are served in this manner? The students say they feel respected. Hopefully, because of these feelings, students will then treat others with the same respect in the future. Well, I actually enjoyed it because I finally got to use the of Chinese culture. I think it's good that we learn lessons like this because not that much people get to. I like the models how we bow to show respect and show that we care. To have manners and to treat others the same way you want to be treated. I enjoyed this lesson, and I think the kids enjoyed it too. Maybe I enjoyed it. I, maybe I enjoyed it more than they did. It would be a waste not to continue to use the lesson plans, considering the amount of work it entails to put each lesson together. Fortunately, due to the success of the program at Lytle Creek Elementary School, City's Education Foundation has expanded their program to more schools. One of these schools is Charles Lee Elementary in Azusa, California. Demographically similar to the Lytle Creek community, Charles Lee Elementary School also has a student population who predominantly comes from low-income households. But that doesn't prevent the students, the teachers, or the principal from being receptive to the lessons. Let's go meet them now. Charles H. Lee Elementary is a bustling school nestled in a low-income neighborhood in Southern California. 75% of its school population qualify for free breakfasts and lunches based on household need. Due to economic stressors and the weight of California state school testing, the teachers are not able to give the character education the resources that it deserves. Zerchi volunteers step in to help with bi-weekly character education classes. So the character education program at Charles Lee Elementary School um, has been here for two years and we're wrapping up our second year of character education program for the first graders. These are lessons on how to build up, you know, your character. So the themes are usually on giving, being respectful, being thankful, being tolerant, being courageous. That was, that was great. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. This is my 37th year as a teacher, so I've been here for many, many years. And I always want my children to do very well academically, but I want them also to be, to have a good heart when they leave my classroom, to be caring of other people, to be respectful. I feel that we've just been focused with test taking, test taking, academics, and character traits have always taken a back seat. We try to enforce them, and we enforce them in our own classrooms, but I think we need a little bit more. So now that you already know how to be respectful, we, gotta, we have to learn how to share and take turns, right? Yeah. Yeah? It's nice to have your program coming in and starting them when they're so young and learning and they're learning all those different words that deals with character traits and, and we try to carry it on in second grade and I thank you for coming to our school. I wish you would come to second grade too. Good morning. We're going to have a quick assembly today, uh, and the topic is gratitude. So we have some people here that are going to be talking to you about gratitude today. Zerchi volunteers heard this wish for more classes, but due to a shortage of manpower, it wasn't feasible. However, some lessons were so valuable that they found a solution by occasionally hosting school-wide assemblies. What does it mean to be, have gratitude? Telling your teacher to thank you for Teaching us? Ooh. Are you thankful for? Friends? Friends? Wow, good answer. Who are you thankful for? My family. Our family. We usually get very 
good feedbacks from the teachers of first graders. And I've attended um, teachers' meetings, and we also have really good feedback from the teachers that are not in first grade, but they overall recognize us. I noticed that it started last year at the first grade. I teach second grade, and I noticed the kids come in a lot more caring, and I think there's, they're carrying those character traits onto second grade, and it's so important. Thank you with gratitude. The school-wide assemblies teaches children in a variety of ways, visual, verbal, and with actions. A recent class had the students make hearts to show gratitude to their teachers. Another class showed a video of the Sandy Superstorm disaster. The students were much affected. That made me feel sad when Hurricane Sandy hit because of how it ruined the people's houses. Opening students' eyes and hearts are only one of the ways that Zhe Qi has worked with Charles H. Lee Elementary. Uh, but specifically in the last two years, we really have kind of have ramped up our involvement with you guys, and it's been a great, uh, we've been doing character assemblies all the way to, you know, doing uh, money collection to doing uh, uh, different other projects, so it's been great. We actually had the whole school wide. It was a bamboo bank in every classroom. Um, I think they all got filled in. So I think this was one of the last ones got filled in there. So we want to make sure this turned into you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the love you have us and the teachers and principal. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have a lot of requests from different schools. At this point, we have more requests than, you know, resources. We're still trying to grow our volunteer pool. We're still trying to grow our teachers who can actually understand the master's teaching and deliver it in a very interactive and age-appropriate way so that kids can learn and understand and take it to their heart. Raising a child takes a village and many, many years of thoughtfulness, dedication, and resources. By working with Charles Lee Elementary, Zhe Qi helps to share the burden at least for one more neighborhood. Oh, and little by little, it's bearing fruit. No. Did you work by yourself or did you work with others? Work with others! Ah, okay. On all levels, Charles Lee Elementary School embraced the character education program. Meanwhile, at another school that Siji Foundation touched was Extran Elementary in San Dimas, California. Since the community here is of better circumstances, volunteers slightly modified the lessons by offering after-school tutoring for the students most at need and holding larger lessons to teach the values of protecting one's surroundings and Mother Earth. Students were also taught to respect the environment as well as each other. These lessons didn't take much persuasion to take root. It's Extran Elementary School in San Dimas, California. It is quiet at the moment because classes are out, except for the faint hum of words from one of the classrooms. I can see. Okay. 45. Yes, that's correct. There. Jump. It was about two years ago, we kind of met and talked about what, what does extra need, what do our students need, and I said, you know, many of our students um, just need someone in their lives that's consistent and, and a, a positive person for them in their lives that they can touch base with every week, and they said, you know, we'd like to be that person for those students. Tutoring classes have been held at the school for over two years. Every Thursday, volunteers come to this location to tutor students who have been falling behind in their studies. It's been really nice very caring, kind, and that's been extremely successful. The kids have responded really well to that. Some of these students, they, they, they're homeless, they uh, have uh, living conditions to where they don't have that strong adult yes. who checks each week with them, and so it's been really a positive experience for those students. Volunteers also provide students with environmental classes both at Zerchi headquarters and at their school, and have been since 2012. Whether if it's teaching gratitude or respect, we have to express love to connect these concepts. That's why it's important to put environmental protection into action. In the classrooms, students are taught hands-on lessons about recycling and conservation. This one, it's a newspaper. I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's been a great experience for the students. They don't often get to have hands-on experiences about recycling, so this has been a great opportunity for them. In another classroom, it was very quiet.
students were stunned to see footage of the drought-ravaged area in Gansu, China, which brought home how difficult a lack of water could be. When you're washing your body, you could turn it off, and then when you need to rinse it off, you turn it back on. We have designed this curriculum to create sustainable change. These changes will continue to happen even when their teachers or parents are not present. For instance, when they are brushing their teeth, they will remember to conserve water. There's more pride in their environment. Um, as I look around the campus, there's not a lot of trash on it, and I think they take um, pride in that. But I like that it just teaches them to be respectful and to pick up after themselves and to take care of um, their environment around them. I think it teaches that piece of kindness. A garden has been a great teacher for us. It's taught many of us patience. It's taught us how to share. It's taught us math. It's taught us science. All of second grade, we did a little project for the garden in this class. Miss Humphrey assigned us fruit or vegetables that we grew in a garden. Mine was strawberries, and I, my partner was my friend Isabella. We put the seeds in soil, and we just kept watering them. A lot of our students don't have the backyards or the area to have home gardens. So a lot of them don't even know where the lettuce comes from in the supermarket or what a carrot looks like as it's growing. And I'm so excited about the composting project because that's just another area that um, Zucci has such an expertise in. Our compost soil is called black gold by many, many gardeners. Okay. I know, there are bugs in there. But these bugs help us, okay? Just like our earthworms help us. Now. You in the yellow. Twigs, okay, I'll take twigs. The children were taught what could and could not be used in compost, knowledge solidified by hands-on experience. Plastics, magazine paper, shouldn't go into the compost. What should? Um, paper and dead leaves. Proper waste and food scraps go into the composting bin. At the school, the compost go into the garden plots that the kids take care of. To plant things, maybe carrots? Well, what I did see is a lot of them took a lot of pride in what they were doing. They would want to go out and look at it and make sure it's okay, doesn't look any different today. Like I was growing it myself, I was very proud of what I was doing instead of just going to the store and buying some food. The more you know and the more you understand about that world around you and how to take care of it, the better you're going to be able to, um, to coexist in that world and build relationships and, and understand those pieces and how they connect. Thank you for teaching us to compost. I can't wait to start composting. Like plants, young minds need to be fed and water consistently before they flower. Zuchi's Education Foundation supports the local communities by caring for these students who have already bloomed under the character education lessons. Perhaps in the future, these students can spread these seeds of knowledge as it was passed to them. I'm Ginger Chang. I hope you enjoyed our show today, and I'll see you next week.